I'm back. Then I got cut off earlier the video. I was trying to finish uh, showing you guys how to fill in your beadwork. So I've finished filling in this area right here that we previously saw. And so I'll go on to fill in this area so you can see how it's done. So I'll just start off with my lead thread. Grab some beads over here. As you can see, I'm going to bead off of this hank right here. So I'm just kind of going to eyeball how many I need. And then I'm going to use my needle to just go through the beads and pull it off of the string like that. Now we're going to see if that fits. And looks like it is a couple beads too many, so we're going to slide two off like that. And then I am going to tack it down. <clears throat> I also forgot to mention earlier that if you don't feel comfortable um, with your tacking thread being open like this, how I showed you this tack thread is open on one side. Um, sometimes, you know, you just may not have all the right kind of thread at your disposal. It's hard to come by. You have to order online or have a specialty store nearby. Anyways, um, if you do have a smaller size thread like B or O or zero, whatever it's called, um, you can double up the thinner threads because you don't want to double up D thread. D thread, I believe, is the thickest thread that you can get for beading. Um, I prefer to use Nemo. It's spelled N-Y-M-O. Um, it doesn't fray as much as you're passing the needle through because, you know, Especially if you're doing leather work, like working on leather, which will be my next video. I'm going to show you how to do lazy stitch on leather because I have a big project coming up that I have to work on. Um, <clears throat> when you're passing that, that uh, thread through the leather, it really kind of beats that, that thread up. It gets frayed pretty quickly. Um, but I really like Nymo. Nemo, Nymo, I'm not sure. You can order these online. This is size D. And sometimes they have smaller threads. And you can double up a thinner thread. Um, that's okay. I'm just saying the larger thread, the thick thread, the D. You don't want to double that up when you're beating because that'll leave big old gaps. Okay. And um, as I was explaining before, um, when you're beating from the outside, the outside in, <clears throat> you need to be careful. Um, if you sometimes don't have the right kind of beating material, like uh, if it's kind of like a mushier felt. I don't have the right words, but um, what happens is if you're beading and you outline and then you bead inwards, if you're pulling your thread too tight, what will happen is it will start to concave in as you get towards the center part. And so that's kind of why you see where I kind of evenly went around all the edges and then I'm starting to fill it in. A lot of times if maybe you have too much pressure on one area or as you're going inwards, it'll start to concave and you don't want that. You want everything to be nice and flat. 
see like how I have right here, you know, I started all the edges and, you know, it seems to be fairly flat. Like there's no going concaving. You don't want that. And that's just from having the right kind of tension on your, oh, and I also need to show you guys this. This is her headband that I made. This is the main piece of her, of her outfit. And look how beautiful and shiny that is. I love shiny stuff. That's why I like beads. It's like glitter that you can just put on stuff and it stays forever. <laughs> so this is her little, this is the back I used a leather. And uh, later on, I can also show you guys how to do just this one needle edging technique right here. Um, one bead, sorry, one bead edging technique that just kind of makes everything secure. I haven't added anything to keep it on her head because I haven't know. And then there's this part I need to finish. <clears throat> so anyways, let's finish up this little piece right here. And kind of when you get <clears throat> to the smaller areas, um, the more, you know, comfortable you get, you can just, um, use one thread to just kind of, you know, lead thread and then tacking it down if you want. So turn that little bead right there. Oh, look at that. Shiny. Shiny is the best. So how I'm plugging up that little. Now we're going to go through here and get three beads. <clears throat> I'm sorry. I'm just getting over a cold too. I also would have been finished with these a while ago. So that can be tacked down. Even though it's three, just three little beads, you still want to tack things like this down just to keep everything uniformed, you know. You see how that one side just kind of pops out every time I pass it through. I need to pull. See now what I'm going to do is because this little tail is getting close to. See how it's getting close to being two. I'm just going to slide my needle down a little bit further on the string and give me a little bit more slack. So I'm just going to take my needle. And what's great about this using kind of an open um, also an open. Um, tacking needle or you know having it open like this is if you don't like how something is going you can just slide this tack needle off the thread and pull your stitches out go backwards and pull them out because if something's not working it's better just to take it out pull everything you don't have to cut it off you can just kind of pull everything out and just start over again because uh, it's better to just you know this is so permanent of a, you know, thing that you're making and it's better just to get it done the right way instead of trying to keep going. I mean, there's been times in the past where I've taken out five hours of work without a second thought because I didn't like the way it looked. <laughs> and that's, you know, sometimes you just have to do those things, you know, just to get it done right. So right here, we're coming to the end. We're filling it in. <clears throat> and there's going to be these times where you, yeah, look at, we're just going to plug all those little holes up right there with other beads.
I would have had these finished a while ago, but I had to work on some moccasins. Um, I made two pair of moccasins since the last time I came back to this beadwork. And that happens a lot with things I need to make for my family. Um, I end up taking orders uh, to make things that are requested. And so I make moccasins as well. And I'm actually thinking about making a video to show y'all because I had to teach myself. I didn't have anybody to show me or pass on knowledge. So I figured it out from a pattern that I got online, the directions. I followed the directions and I figured out how to make moccasins. And uh, then the rest of it, I just kind of learned on, on, on my own. So I'm kind of going through here and looking for smaller bead to, to finish this off right here. <clears throat> There's just these little areas. I don't like to leave them open and but you can't crowd it either, because if you crowd it, then your beadwork gets all buckly. And like I said, nobody wants buckly beadwork. Oh, look at it, and my thread got kind of tangled right there. So we're going to just pop it back out and fix it. There we go. See that little thread got funny right there. There we go, see? Nice. And here's this little, little tiny hole. I could leave it, but oh my gosh, I can't leave it. I can't just look at that, because I'll look at it every single time I'm beating, I'll see it. Or if my daughter is out there dancing, I'll look at that one hole and think, oh my gosh, I should have just filled it in. Yeah, I get kind of funny about things. So I'm not finding too many beads. Oh, there's one. There we go. Sometimes what I'll do is I'll just take a few from the hank and slide them over here. If I'm working on a project, I don't, I don't want to take too many off, but I want to have my options open to find the right kind of bead to fit the little area. It looks like this one's the best candidate. So we're gonna fill this in right here. I'm just gonna pull it and hope that everything there, see, isn't that nice? So should we go on to the other one? I think so. You can probably be a good idea to just tie this off right here really quick. And I haven't showed you that yet. <clears throat> so if you want to tie off on the back, tie your knots, just take your needle. I like to find another piece of thread to slide it under just so it's a little bit more secure. And then we're going to make a knot on the back. So here we go. I'm making a loop and now I'm going to pass my needle through. If you want to, Pass it through once if you see that it looks like it's gonna tie pretty good especially with a thicker and just pull it like that so there's a knot that I'll keep it nice and secure and I'm gonna do that with this other one too as you can see right here I was working on something and I just did not like how it was going so I took out all of this right here <laughs> so here I'm going to I'm going to knot this side to it before I start it on in on that other side. There. Okay. Now we're going to start over here. And see, when you do this kind of beadwork, especially with these angles, you're gonna get all kinds of funny little areas that you need to figure out how to fill up. It looks like my best bet would to be just go right up against this other area side right here instead of trying to fill it in. You just kind of have to go with the flow and figure out what needs to be done. 
<clears throat> I like to keep my little threads short too, so it makes it easier to pull the beads off. I hope that's not the mailman. Coming. All right, so I need to take probably four beads off of this darker blue. One more bead. Like my background music, it's a dryer and a washer and meditation music. <laughs> the peaceful sounds of the household. <laughs> I need to make my videos during the daytime when my kids are in school because if not, I could not get anything done. <laughs> my kids are fun and wild. <laughs> That's why I love them. Okay, here we go. So I kind of measured... I measured it up and since this is kind of a curve I'm just gonna go ahead and tack it down the lead thread right here and that's gonna be really close see now <clears throat> if I were to tack this down with this bead right here once I start tacking down every two beads these beads are kind of just slowly move this way and it's going to end up buckling right here. So I'm just going to take this one off. This last bead. You don't want to force everything. Beading is not about forcing. It's about finding an absolute balance between the tension and the thread and the beads and kind of going with the flow. You don't want to force too much because if you force it then that's when you get your buckly buckly everything you just want to find the balance and you don't want to pull your thread too tight or have it be too loose because if it's too loose it won't hold the tack thread down or the lead thread down but if it's too tight then you start to get your um buckling and concaving of your material i don't remember if i already shared this story but my grandmother taught me how to bead and when she taught me how to bead we used a grocery bag and fabric and i stitched the grocery bag to the fabric and then i beaded my thing and i still have it and then i had another friend teach me how to make my own backing with um, a pillowcase or a sheet and, and flour. And I made a flour mixture and I dipped you know, the piece in and then I laid it flat and then I dipped another piece in the flour and took all the excess flour off. It was flour and water mix. And then I put about three together it was a good three sheets of that flour water in the in the sheet the material and then I let it dry and that's what I beaded on for a long time until I finally found easy felt and another um, viewer was asking me about the paper I once you bead onto it see like right here I, I did I use a tearaway um, kind of, well, what is it called? A uh, stabilizer. I get the tearaway kind. And so when you get to the end of your beading, you can just pull all of this off and you don't have to look at your, you know, and if you really want to get crazy, you can, uh, you can also color in your colors and then you don't have to see any white at all if you want to. And I do that sometimes. But I didn't do it on this one because I'm just trying to get this done. <clears throat> see, like those little facets? We're going to turn that one. So look at that. You can see it shine. But yeah, before before Jesus was like you know, 15, 20 years ago, that's what I beaded on. This flower 
it was a flour paste and old sheets and I mixed it all together and put it and dry and you have a nice hard flat piece of stuff to beat on and I've heard people use baby cribbing I've never used it before but so then you also want to pay attention especially when you're filling things in about the stacking of your beads how you need to alternate it it's good to pay attention to where your beads come together and that really does make a difference in um it does make a difference in the cleanliness i guess is a good way um the cleanliness of your of your beadwork i don't know what other word to use but a nice clean lines that's what we're looking for and I think I'm channeling Bob Ross because I'm going to put this tiny little bead happy little place to live I love Bob Ross oh this little this little bead is not going to join his friends he's gonna go over here and hang out at this party <laughs> uh, my kids love love Bob Ross and we watch Bob Ross all the time okay so now we're just you know stitching and when you uh, are doing corners like that you want to stay consistent you want to stack your beads so here it's going this way and then this way stacking it and pay attention to that you want to stack them in a nice clean manner and that really helps the overall look of your beadwork <clears throat> we're really paying attention to the way that those lines are moving some people try to force a uh, straight into a design and you really don't want to force it you just want to kind of go along and see that beads too big so we're going to go over here and find a tiny little bead there we go I think we will I'm just gonna cruise through this really quick get it finished and I'm just gonna jump over here just jump over this way and so how I'm trying to stagger the different colors so I'm gonna go up at three beads, four dark ones. Ooh, look at that shine. Look at the sun starting to come over here. So it's going to start getting all kind of shiny up in here. And we're just going to tack and keep tacking. And I really would, I, I really strongly suggest not going over two beads to tack down. It really does make a difference even with three. Even tacking down every three makes a big difference um, in the overall overall look of your beadwork. <clears throat> it's just safer to tack down every two. I'm sorry I keep scooting over here. My bad. So yeah, the pattern, um, I usually will draw out what I'm going to be beading on, you know, a piece of paper. You can just use paper. 
if you're doing more of a, a graphical design or geometric um you it's best to use that um graph paper that has all those lines and you can use that you i use that quite a bit i don't know what the heck it's called it's got all them little squares on it that's really good to get really nice precise uh especially if you're doing straight lines when you're beading that's a good way to do that um, oops see sometimes your uh, thread will kind of come undone So now I, I'm at the end of this right here, so I'm just going to pull my last paint. Right, I'm just going to cut it open like that and leave it so I can just grab my beads off there. So kind of when you start getting towards the inside, you don't really have to try as hard to kind of keep everything down. It'll just kind of pop into place because the pieces are shorter. And you just want to keep following that same pattern until you're finished. One thing I really like about beading is all the juggling you kind of have to do. Figuring things out and having to problem solve and I think that's what I enjoy about it. We're almost finished. Yay. See those facets like this one, they'll want to lay flat underneath. I just I just turn them over. Sometimes I get kind of stuck on doing that instead of beating. <laughs> Wanting to turn all those little flat flat sides so everyone can see them. So we're gonna right here it's getting to be really smaller you're not going to be able to fit the beads in so in this area what i'm going to do is just take a few beads and um that are sideways so find the smallest thinnest bead that you can find if you can find one it kind of takes a few minutes to look around And just, oops, put it in that little area. Sometimes, ooh, like I can find, I found a smaller one over here. area 
sometimes you'll encounter problems where this area is too small so you just have to put in a row of sideways ones. That's what I would do. Yeah. Looks like four is going to be what's going to fit. And we'll just tack this one down. tack it down right you know what since it's like I'm not gonna tack it down straight in the middle I'm gonna tack it down right here at the ends there I'll make it nice and flat there we go and that's how you finish off the inside Uh, I've got to show this again look how beautiful that is and then that's the piece and these two hair ties are going to be the pieces that go to her outfit thank you